Joining us now with reaction to the latest ISIS beheading and much more, Oklahoma Republican Senator James Lankford. He's on the Homeland Security, Intelligence, and Appropriations Committees. Uh, Senator, thank you for joining us today. Glad to be able to join you. Um, Somber day. It is. And what do we do from here? Do we, does the U.S. negotiate with terrorists? Is there only one language they will understand? What do we do? They only understand the language of force. And I think we as Americans have a difficult time with this because we assume we can sit down with people and we can negotiate. This is a group of individuals, they don't want to negotiate. They want raw power. They want a worldwide caliphate. They want to have their point of view spread all over the world and they're being successful in their region of the world. So this is force has to be applied to force. Well, and to that point, there's been a lot of discussion about the authorization for use of military force. The president said in the State of the Union, he said repeatedly last fall that he wants that from Congress. I hear from folks on both sides of the aisle saying, we want to give it to you, but you have to come to us with a strategy, with some kind of clear um, you know, path forward. So where are we in that process? So what's interesting is early on, the president said he didn't need another authorization of use, use of military force. The previous one from 2001 and from 2003, that was enough to be able to carry this. We repeat, and myself and others repeated back over and over again, there's nothing in the previous authorization of use of military force that allows them to expand into Syria and to be able to take this uh, war into other places. The president cannot just unilaterally take American troops anywhere he wants to take them. Congress and the American people have to be involved in this. This is not just a power struggle and an attitude between Congress and the president. This is the nature of our Constitution and a divided government that more people have to be engaged in something as serious as going into war. Uh, so this will be a big issue and should be there. The president should lean into that and present his idea for an authorization of use of military force. We would then respond with whatever we want to edit, but he's yet to be able to turn over an idea of what he's really looking for and what he's trying to accomplish. Yeah, and to that point, he is going to tomorrow present you with something else, which is the budget. There are a lot of questions about how things are going to be paid for. We're hearing a lot more about raising taxes and um, new programs and all kinds of other funding. Um, is there any common ground? Will there be any common ground there with congressional Republicans? Yeah, the, it was interesting this uh, past week, the president gave a speech saying economy is doing better. And so now is the time for us to spend more. Now is the time to start raising taxes because the economy is doing better. My very first reaction when I heard it was, wasn't that the same speech that he gave four years ago when he said the economy is doing bad? So now is the time for the government to spend more. Now is the time for us to be able to raise taxes and other things. Uh, we can't just have the same answer for everything as raise taxes and we'll spend more and that'll actually stabilize it. Uh, right now, it looks like what his budget proposal will be, and we'll know in the next couple of days exactly what it is. What he wants to do is break through the sequestration uh, caps and to be able to try to spend more and to say we need to do that because the economy is going better. That would be equivalent to someone who's having a tough time making their credit card payments, but when they get a job, and, or when they get a raise, they say, great, I got a raise. I'm going to go buy a brand new TV for the Super Bowl tonight and even put even more on my credit card instead of paying down the debt. If the economy is doing better, terrific. Let's start paying down debt. Let's get us back into balance, not just accelerate and keep spending more. Something there's been bipartisan agreement about in the Senate has been this question of sanctions on Iran, on beefing up our position in the talks and the negotiations over their nuclear program. Um, but word this week that even those who had been pushing the president on this, and the White House has definitely been pushing back, they're going to give the president a little bit more breathing room. This may be pushed back into late March. What's your take on that, and um, what do you make overall of the negotiations where they're going with the next deadline late June? Two things Iran needs to be able to get their nuclear program going, time and money. And unfortunately, that's what this administration is giving them. Loosening up the sanctions so they have a little bit more time, loosening up the sanctions so they can do more international trade, get more money in. They're continuing to advance their nuclear program while they're negotiating with us with no threat on the horizon of any increased sanctions. It is a positive thing for us to be able to lay additional sanctions on the table and say, if Iran does not fulfill its obligation, then these sanctions are coming. Uh, we can't seem to play good cop, bad cop with Iran right now because the president keeps pushing back and saying, we don't want to give any more uh, sanctions that are coming if they don't fulfill their requirements. Congress's simple statement is, we think there should be consequences. This can't be an endless thing. The more time that they have to stall, the more time they have to develop their nuclear program, once they have their nuclear weapon, then there's no time to negotiate anymore. Okay, um, we're out of time, but I have to quickly ask you, having been a member of the House now in the Senate, how different is it on the other side of the hill for you? Yeah, they're two entirely different bodies. Uh, people think they're just north side, south side of the building, they're the same. They're entirely different. In the House, everything runs by just a majority. If you can get 218, mm -hmm. you can do everything. In the Senate, everything has to have 60, and Republicans don't have 60. Uh, so even things with the budget and other things, there's a lot of things we'd like to do. We can't move at that same speed. It took an hour and a half for the House to do Keystone. It took four weeks mm -hmm. for the Senate to do Keystone. So it's the nature of our republic. By the way, the founders wanted it that way, to be, have a slow place to be able to process through things. Uh, but people do understand they're two different bodies. Mm -hmm. All right. Former Congressman, now Senator James Lankford, thank you very much for your time today. Uh, thank you. Good to see you.